welcome to the Inspired Intentions Podcast with Skytera Wellness. If you've been too busy and not taking care of yourself, it's time to reset habits and plunge into your new normal. I'm your host, Jeff Ford, and I'm joined today with my now regular co-host, Alan Broyhill. Hey, man, what's up? <laughs> not much. Happy to be in the booth with you again today. <laughs> Once again, getting the show started. Yeah, we're making this happen, and we have an expert dietitian in the booth with us, none other than Lindsay Ford. What's up, Lindsay? What's up? Hi. Nice to have you. Thanks. Love your headband. Yeah, Speedy Blue Eyes got it for me. <laughs> <laughs> She's back again. Now, now we need to clarify. Yeah, yeah, we need let's to clarify. clarify. That. Alan, you want to tell them where Speedy Blue Eyes came so from? So Jeff told us right before the episode that he had to choose a superhero name, and instead of choosing something simple, he gave himself <laughs> a three-word name: Speedy Blue Eyes. Speedy Blue his. Eyes. The Laser Jet Blues. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. It's super fitting for me, though. Y- y'all don't disagree, it's, right? It's not like it is Superman, fitting. Yeah. I will say that it is fitting. Batman. <laughs> Iron Man. All right. Speedy Blue Eyes. All right. I think it's going <laughs> to catch on, though. I know our uh, viewers are going to definitely appreciate it. <laughs> Anyways, we also have Maddie McDonald. Whoop, not on whoop. mic today. She's in the booth, so she's listening in on our Q&A. Alan, you want to kick this off? What is our question for our expert today? Yeah, totally. So I had this question come up in um, our home plan, which is the class we teach on Fridays. Um, and a guest asked me about juicing and i guess it was probably more about like smoothies i doubt he's going through and juicing a ton of stuff for a meal replacement but more about incorporating things into like a smoothie so the question would be would, like lindsay would you recommend a smoothie routine for somebody as a meal replacement say like a breakfast or a lunch item or something Yeah, I think a lot of our listeners could benefit from something like that. I don't think it's a must, but if you find that you're really busy in the morning and you need something quick and on the go, it's a really easy option where you can still get a lot of goodies in there. So a routine could be great. It doesn't have to be every single day. So even a few times a week. I know Jeff does that. Yeah, my my smoothies are pretty awesome. And definitely when you spoke to the fact like if you're busy, can be really helpful to get more nutrients into your body. And I, I know it gets me through a couple of uh, longer days here at Skyterra. Yeah, helps Mia out too. Our- <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mia's always like, smoothie. Smoothie, strawberry smoothie. smoothie. Yeah, strawberry it's like smoothie. her new, new catchphrase. Yeah. That's adorable. Yeah, it's pretty So w- cute. would you recommend doing it every day? Would you recommend doing it three times a week? Would you recommend doing it? What, what's your recommendation? If someone is more prone to skip breakfast and this is the way to have breakfast every day, then I'd say have it every day you might get bored of it okay um but maybe just a few times a week yeah i mean we are born to chew so there is some satisfaction that comes out of chewing our food versus just drinking everything sure what would you recommend to put in a smoothie just kind of a quick breakdown of what that could look like for listeners yeah so i think some sort of frozen fruit is nice because it it can help thicken it sweeten it up cheaper now with inflation to go the frozen route. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now like strawberries are what, like six bucks for a. Yeah. I can get a whole bag in the frozen section yeah. for six bucks. It's like triple yeah. the amount of fresh. Yeah. Anyways, keep going. Uh, frozen banana is probably my favorite. And especially as bananas start to go bad, take the peel off and put them in the freezer. Yeah. There you go. Um, another thing would be some sort of green. I think it's a great way to get greens in without tasting it because it can hide from everything else. So spinach is really easy. So I would go that direction. That's great for our listeners who don't love vegetables. I, I definitely fall into that category. And that's yeah. a good tip to throw that I, in. And I know before you know it, we've got spring, summer coming around. You could even add like some mint mm, or some basil and kind of make oh, it cool. really fresh feeling, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, and then some sort of liquid. Right. So, <laughs> you need I mean, liquid. Really? <laughs> liquid. <laughs> you need liquid uh, just to make everything come together and to make it actually a smoothie. So this is where some sort of milk could, wor- could work. I know, Jeff, you use oat milk and you've been digging that. Yeah. Yeah. Almond milk, coconut milk. Uh, yeah. Lots of options out there, right? It's going to give it something creamy, give you a little extra nutrients in there. Uh, and then some sort of protein i'd say for sure so this could be greek yogurt it could be kefir it could be a protein powder you could add nut butter seeds oh cool love mix of things so essentially what you're saying is just like stick to the sky terra plate and put it in a blender to make your smoothie i mean that's as simple as it gets yeah that's cool yeah that would be great Awesome. awesome yeah wow look 
Alan and I just finishing each other's <laughs> We're, we're in sync right yeah, now. We're getting oh, this is getting dangerous. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lindsay. Today for the rest of the show, we have Mr. Dr. Lee back on air, and we're going to be finishing off our three-part series discussing paint. And our focus for the series has been all about healthy aging. So if you're out there, a listener trying to reduce pain in your life, you do not want to miss this final episode. Alan, what are we doing for the five minute focus? Oh, just five minute focuses are really cool right now. We're in an eight part series all about motivation. So this will be number three of the eight part series. And so that'll keep going for a little little while, but that's uh, that's at the end of our episode. Yeah, make sure you stick around. Thanks for being on air with us, Lindsay. And thanks Anytime. for uh, Maddie being in the booth and yeah. just creeping yeah. in the corner over there. <laughs> <laughs> you did great, Maddie. <laughs> did great. Bring in the smiles. Cool. Thanks guys. Uh, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of the show. I think uh, I'd like to introduce our guest today. His name is none other than Dr. Lee. Dr. Up, Lee? Lee. Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for having me back on. Back again. We're going to do like we've done every <laughs> single series. I'm going to say, hey, if you see me at Sky Terra, if you call me Dr. Lee, I'm going to be like, who are you talking to? Yeah, you- call him Dr. Patilla. That's his last yeah, name. Yeah. Just call me Lee. We're, just on, call we're, on, Lee. A, we're on a first name basis. We like here. to keep it casual and casual. authentic. That's Very authentic. authentic. We, like, we like authenticity. And I, don't, I don't know if you noticed, title. but when I, I, I introduce you as Dr. Lee and then I go, hey, Lee. You, so it's it's actually like I'm you know saying Lee. That's true. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> we are here <laughs> once again for our conversation around strength, mobility, and now pain. So this has been a three-part series. Yep. Go back and listen. Our, our first two episodes were fire. Fire. I was, <laughs> I was looking for a different <laughs> he, adjective. He, was, he wanted to say I it. Wanted to, yeah, I'm I wanted to say it. I want to say just Lee crushed him. So we're, we're grateful to have Lee back on again today. And I think this is a topic we've never dove into on the Inspired Intentions podcast. And yeah. it's something that I, I imagine many of our listeners and I know many of our guests deal with on a regular basis. So we're going to be discussing the ins and outs of pain, you know, what is pain, why it happens, and how to really decrease it uh, after today. Yeah. yeah. We're going to wrap it right in with our strength, which was our first one, our mobility, and all of that is really geared around that aging, healthy aging. Yeah. So the the quick uh, summary of today is uh, got to strength train, got to do mobility, and it's probably going to decrease pain. But yeah. Let's not jump too far ahead. We, I, I like to do that uh, quite often. <laughs> Me too. So let's let's start simple. Lee, what is pain? Simple definition of pain. I'm going to steal the, the definition I use from my Unlock Your Potential talk here at Skyterra. Sounds like a really good talk. It's a great talk. Just come check it out. Tuesday, <laughs> oh. 1130. Do you un- <laughs> unlock a lot of things? We, we try to help folks unlock their potential. Always. The body's powerful. Do you start off with, I am Dr. Patillo and I'm going to unlock your potential? Not exactly. The board will say Dr. Lee Patillo, but I will just say, hey, I'm Lee. <laughs> I'm Lee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so, so what's this definition? Give so, it to us. I, mean, I think pain is something, you know, Jeff said a lot of us guests have. I, the, the, simple, the simple thing is that we're all going to experience pain at some point. Uh, the big takeaway from this should be, it is definitely in a lot of ways negative, but I'm here to tell you there's good news. It can also be thought as a positive thing. Our simple definition of pain is that it's an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Yeah. And I can dive a little deeper on that if you guys want, or Jeff may want to put in some, yeah, some what's insight your, what's too. Your, uh, what's your definition, Jeff? Pain? Yes. It's when something hurts. Something hurts. That's a great way to put <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That However, what it. Lee is saying, it can hurt in different ways. And I like how you put a spin on it already of like pain can actually be a good thing. I, I already kind of yeah. can sense where you're going with that, but maybe elaborate a little bit. Like why is pain a good thing? <laughs> the big thing, this and this almost sounds kind of morbid or negative, but there's actually plenty of research and data that shows there are there are people actually that don't have as solid of pain uh, threshold levels or actually are born with the ability to not experience pain, experience pain the right way others like others. And what's interesting from a um, kind of a biological standpoint, if that, if you fall into that category, your life expectancy is actually less. And the, and the point of that is that, you know, if you can't experience, let's say when you put your hand on the burning stovetop that it hurts, 
you're probably going to leave your hand on there and it's going to be burnt and damaged. And that's kind of where pain should be thought of. Absolutely. It's not fun. No one has ever said, yeah. oh my gosh, I can't wait to be in more pain. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But the, the, the big thing is it's, and you can find other kind of talks I'm sure out there Supporting too. But evidence. Yeah. Exactly. And um, we, we talk about pain as the alarm signal where it's basically your body saying, hey, Lee, Jeff, Alan, there's something off here. I'm telling you this so that we can make a change to fix this. And if you don't, something may may come of this or happen. There might be a greater issue. There may be a line. greater issue. And that kind of plays in where it's not just that sensory aspect of it. There's There's also this emotional and cognitive side of it. And in that definition I gave, it's not just actual tissue damage. You know, if you put your hand on something that's hot, it's hot, it's painful, you take it off quickly, maybe you don't get burnt and you don't get that injury. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you didn't feel the pain and it wasn't real. That's that potential side where it's signaling to you, hey, if you, if you keep doing this, it is gonna become actual damage. Great point. And a lot of times I think we think of, you know, and it's the human response, and I have done this so many times where something hurts and you just immediately are like, it's the end of all, <laughs> everything Eternity. is yeah, exactly. life, life is over <laughs> like this is I, it. my yeah. knee hurts it's probably yeah. the worst tore, possible scenario tore my acl, I tore my ACL. yeah surgery. exactly yeah. And, and and a lot of times we get irrational thinking but there's a reason for that and it's our body warning us hey something is up it just may not be that serious it's just saying hey look your knee hurts maybe you shouldn't go run a marathon in yeah, the moment probably it's trying not to the protect best you yeah. thing to do trying to protect you this is super interesting i, r I really think our listeners are going to have a lot of value from from understanding the different angles of this and and to go back to your imagery of like an alarm clock pain mm -hmm. is an alarm clock it's that warning sign of like hey something is wrong and this actually gives us more information to exactly. get started on on solving it. Exactly. Um, so just to reiterate your definition, I think it's powerful because I know we're going to get into this emotional and cognitive side of this where pain, as you said, it is more than just a sensory event. Pain is also an emotional, cognitive, and behavioral response. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Well, let's let's jump into the research behind pain. What have you seen in your review, obviously you work with a lot of clients who, who have oh, pain. That's right. why they come to you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Um, what's what's kind of some of the research that's out there uh, in the discussion of pain? Yeah. Um, let me, I want to pick a point on what you just said about when people come to me. That's kind of the the catch <laughs> the catch with physical therapy. A lot of times I'm like, yeah. oh, hey, it's great to see you. But that normally means some, something's some, wrong. <laughs> something yeah. is let wrong. Me, let me reflect on that too. I found this interesting. I forget where I heard this. What's so cool about your profession, though, is that they may come to you in pain, but by the end of their experience, they are most likely out of pain and in best case scenario, right? Right. In dentistry, doesn't work like that. That's a good you point. You don't get I've to never... actually feel the feeling where I've heard it's one of the most kind of like depressive type professions. Wow. Because people go to dentists when they're in pain. But you don't go back to your dentist until that pain has, huh. like your regular cleaning has subsided. So it was just a really interesting point of like, hey man, at least you're a physical therapist and you get to see the changes that occur and you get to see people yeah. out of pain, which has to be like that's super my, rewarding. That's my favorite part is even just in a session and even if it's just the standpoint, because a lot of times, and even for myself, you come in and if you're in pain, like you're you're probably freaked out, you're worried. Yeah. Sometimes, this, and there's literature to back this up too, what you see when basically if you see a healthcare professional, it doesn't have to be a physical therapist, anyone really, um, when they can basically take signs and symptoms, link it to what may be going on, and we can rule out the really scary stuff, you see pain level drop. And even a lot of times from not actually doing anything, and that really plays into that, that cognitive emotional side where when you get this outside skilled voice that says, hey, this is what I see, this is what I think is going on, that has a lot of impact on your brain's interpretation of that pain level. And again, that's where it's like, and the point, the big point of this is don't always jump to that. Wow. If I have knee pain, my knee is completely messed up or jacked yeah. up. There are so many other factors that play into it. 100%. And I think what you're saying is you, you on your side of things are able to bring confidence to the situation by ruling things out exactly. and getting folks on kind of, uh, at least the, the map. You might not have the roads exactly of like what's going to solve the pain right away, 
but they're able to start to see a picture of where you're taking them. Exactly. Very well said. I feel like you're talking directly to me right now. Yeah. We had this conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's that's hilarious. I actually had some knee pain in my right knee, and we were just talking about this, what, Tuesday, Lee? Yeah, Same we were. Deal. Yeah. It has a lot to do with his running pattern. That's so what everyone knows. That's what Jeff keeps telling me. Yeah, he's he's out in front from his general center of mass. That's a whole other episode. We'll break well, down. Well, I will tell you guys, technique. jumping on this, <laughs> if you haven't checked out the run walk clinic class that we do here at Skyterra, I have done it and participated in it, and it's phenomenal. Definitely check that out. So to Great. Alan, he probably has a valid point, <laughs> have a valid point oh, there. No, I know he's right, but it, there's there's probably multiple factors oh, playing in. Always, yeah, always. just just with everyone. I, I, and actually kind of going on that, I actually heard, I was watching the, the Tom, there's a Tom Brady series out on um, ESPN Plus, but it has, I think his name's Alex Guerrero, and it's like Brady's guru guy. But there's a really good segment he talks about, you can have the exact same injury in someone, even if it's mechanically the exact same thing, their pain level's different because mm. of what you guys are talking about, yeah. where there's there's just multiple factors where it can be the exact same mechanism of injury, but again psychologically cognitively emotionally all those things they that's that's really what makes our pain different from person to person it's it's very complex but it is really cool and we have a lot of positive stuff to talk about for it too if you are in pain which we're all going to have at some point so yeah yeah love it uh so let's jump into kind of the management of chronic pain in older adults so like what's the research behind that because we've been obviously speaking into folks who are maybe getting back into strength training and mobility and they're they're looking at this as improving their longevity not only improving like how long they live but like making the most of those years so once my belief is when someone's in chronic pain that really isn't like a helpful life it usually doesn't lead to quality of life correct like, in your brain and, and in your heart so uh yeah what's the research behind this whole chronic piece so um, we, we gave a good definition to pain and especially the the simple definition of it. Chronic pain is really when we really, de- there's not a great definition for it. We really define it and depending what literature you read, pain greater than about 12 weeks that doesn't have like really a great explanation for why and what's going on. And the reason that is typical tissue healing is really kind of that eight to 12 week time frame. Okay. And you can have full tissue healing in that eight to 12 weeks and then again still have pain and it may not be related to that and that's where it's more why is this issue hanging around it's getting into that into that chronic side um and and why this is important for aging is a big thing again hopefully we all age to a good a good long a good long a good long period uh, of time period of time however you want to say that but what we're seeing is that chronic pain is really affecting um individuals over the age of 65 Okay. And it's really starting to become more of a of an issue. And on top of that, I think we all know um, in the country, it, really in the world at this point, in in our uh, primary developed countries, comorbidities, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, those are the biggest factors really coming out that are showing that has a huge influence on on chronic pain and someone's pain level. And then on top of that, you talk about stress level i think we could all agree hey guess what yeah american society it's very fast paced it's very go we're talking about yeah. stress and we know that has a big impact on on pain you know if you if let's say you stub your toe and you're in a great mood it's probably not going to hurt as much still not going to feel great but let's say you're you're just ticked off at the world you're not happy you stub your toe it's like that last straw where it's all just kind of falling apart and pain levels a lot worse great yeah. example yeah i i also think like to the point you're making, it, we're, we're moving so fast paced that sometimes when we get this warning sign of pain, we don't acknowledge it and address it quickly. That's a really good point. We never see that with our guests. Never. Never. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there's just the mentality of like, go, go, go. And yeah, but- I, I think it's like bringing the respect back to this sensory like situation that we're receiving. Yeah. Don't yeah. just try and push through it. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Inspired Intentions listeners. Rachel Colasino here. And on behalf of all of us, We hope you are enjoying our new show format. We want your feedback. We still would love to include your questions, your comments in any upcoming episode. That's how we're starting the show now. We're starting the show with you. We want to make sure that we're giving you the content that you want. So please send us your questions, send us your comments to inspiredintentions at skyterrawellness.com. Thank you as always for listening. Now back to the show. 
Uh, so in older adults, like how, like are exercise interventions being used? Like wh what's kind of the stance with, from the evidence of like in managing pain, do you see a lot of interventions being um, followed out there? The, the good news is, and again, I think sometimes we give ourselves a hard time in Western medicine. And I will say like for certain scenarios, we're not the best at certain things. You're starting to see a push where you're getting more physicians, you're getting more research and literature that's coming out that's saying, especially for chronic pain, exercise, meditation, yoga, these things are definitely helpful and impactful. Now, I will sit here and tell you like, hey, just because you do that stuff, that never means you're never going to have pain or just completely diminish chronic pain forever. But what the what the research and the literature says is that we're basically able to diminish pain and have a really big impact on it with doing those things. And what's really cool, I think, is like, you know, exercise, yoga, strengthening, mobility, all this stuff we've talked about. You don't have to have fancy medical equipment or pills or stuff like that. It's all stuff you can practice on your own. Yeah. There's definitely people you can seek out to get help with, but I think that's the big thing with um with aging. I think a lot of times it's easy to feel like, "Hey, we can't control this this scenario." And that's true to a degree, but there's a lot of things we can do to help really combat it and make it yeah, you can't control like the the pain response, but once you have that pain response, you can control what you do with it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, exactly. And I think that's what's so incredible about the tips we gave in the first couple of episodes is like if you're experiencing pain, we can start a strength training protocol. We can right. start doing some mobility. And what I, I actually always encourage guests to do before they even seek out a physical therapist necessarily is to play with some of the mobility techniques, like source your triage your own body when you get this situation and try to apply some uh, approaches to it that, you know, we have on Skyterra at home or just in right. general. Um, it, it really can give you feedback even before you see that professional, if we have to take it there. I think that's, you, you preach to me, baby, keep talking. I love it. <laughs> but I think, I think that's a huge thing is, you know, I, I don't think always having reliance on, Hey, I have to go see a healthcare provider is necessarily a healthy thing. Now, don't get me wrong. By all means, if you're having pain and issues, that yeah. is a great route to go. But I think the point Jeff is making is, do we always need to rush to that and kind of catastrophize, I, I would say definitely not exactly what he said. Start with general exercise, start with breathing, meditation. What's really interesting for um, for low back pain and, it's, and even more so in chronic low back pain, from a research standpoint, you look at clinical practice guidelines for physical therapists, that's like our gold standard, what we follow. We have researched manual therapy, you know, dry needling, joint manipulation, cracking people's back like a like a PT or all Cairo these does. PT all these interventions. All these interventions. We've looked at PT specific exercise. We've looked at general exercise. What's really interesting is we've found general exercise and PT based exercise work the best. And what's really interesting is those two don't have significant difference in which one is more effective. Oh, wow. And now as a PT, I can look at that and You're say- You're basically not needed. Yeah, exactly. So you can, look <laughs> oh. at that, you can look at that and say like, oh, wow, like no one needs to do PT. They just need general exercise. And I don't think that's really the point. The point should be that, like you're saying, start there, see what happens. And on top of that, if you're seeing a chiropractor, a physical therapist, and you have especially chronic pain, the foundation of your treatment should really be rooted in solving that. Exactly. And it should be finding good, solid general exercise you can participate yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, you know, from the fitness professional side of this, like I always have the catchphrase above and below. You know, if we know the knee is hurting, then we know there's something going on with the quads and the calves. And right. whether that's strength or mobility, as the professional who is working with you, it is their job to figure out, hey, what exercise protocols can I apply that are going to improve the symptoms that my uh, client is experiencing? Yeah. I think to touch on um, some more literature and, and science behind, again, like getting a joint manipulation, going to a PT or chiropractor when we manipulate your back or your spine, what that means is you get that fancy crack or pop. What's happening is you're getting beta endorphin, you're getting these, op you're basically getting natural opioids released that make things feel better. And what's really interesting is like in exercise, I think we talked about this maybe in the first, when we talked about strength training and it, I think there was some literature talking about, or maybe it was mobility, but anyway, mm -hmm. they're basically saying, Hey, strength training is starting to show we can modulate pain. And what that means is basically decrease pain level. 
and you're actually getting those same endorphins and those things released. And that's also the pill or the chemical that we're trying to synthetically make and give people. So it's kind of like, interesting. you know, there's, do you, do you have to do the pill or do you have to do the chiropractic or PT visit or do you have to do the exercise visit? You know, they're all, they're all doing the similar thing. It's just the method of getting there. And yeah. I would say what, which one has the least side effects and which one empowers you to take the most control. I would say it's the exercising and strengthening because you can totally for sure do that on your own yeah, yeah. For sure. or with, or with guidance from someone, of course. So lots of options for improving pain when we, when we get these signals in our body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for older adults, what are the best ways for older adults to manage chronic pain? And I think, you know, pulling back into this whole uh, approach on the cognitive side of things and emotional side is, is quite interesting. But, you know, in general, best ways, older adults to manage chronic pain, what, what would you say? Um, based on, so the research we looked at, it talks about, again, opioids, pain management with drugs. It talks about exercise. There's a little bit about meditation on there. It talks about physical exam versus imaging. Really the best thing that, again, reiterating, exercise is where we're really seeing excellent improvements. Um, on top of that, what you're seeing with, let's, let's go the medical route. You're actually better off getting someone to take you through physical exam, look at you in depth, and even having, I think the research quotes something like having Basically, if you see a physician, a nurse, and like another type of provider, so you're getting this well-rounded group to yeah. kind of help solve yeah. this issue, it has a bigger impact than just going kind of that like one provider, maybe going the imaging route. And I think the point of that is, again, kind of touching on all this stuff, a mixture of healthcare providers, a mixture of exercise, and, and really trying to be holistic. And I, I think the big thing is, again, coming back to it and really just hammering down on this starting with the the exercise move sweat that's where you're going to notice i think pretty start to see improvements pretty fast. pretty quick differences and the another uh, interesting thing that research points out with this too is there's still more literature that needs to be and evidence and research that needs to be done looking at how pain changes as we age it's there's kind of conflicting research where you know, some, some people as we age, we get a heightened response to pain level. And some people, because of the way our nerve pathways change, they mm -hmm. basically are less responsive. You actually see this like delayed pain and this diminished pain. And it's like, oh. it's hard to say who's wow. who, but again, the good thing talking about, let's talk about those nerve pathways for a second. Nerves are highly vascularized. They need a lot of good blood flow to it. That's what vascularize. That's what means. that's what vascularize. Okay. Okay. A, lot so good, we, a lot of good blood flow. Nerves to it. need blood flow. No, okay. Nerves need a lot of good blood yeah. flow. Guess what is the best way to get good blood flow to your to your nervous tissue? It's a I, I have shocker. no idea. It's a big shock. It's going to be yeah. It's huge. E exercise. So you have to like moving. move to get blood flow to your body. Exactly. Crazy. And um, the this literature we looked at too. What's interesting, and you're kind of talking about covering all these bases. It actually said this from what we have been doing, again, I think we're getting better and improving, but it actually quotes and says, as a healthcare industry, we have underutilized basically prescribing and using movement and, movement exercise. and exercise, but you are seeing a push for it, which is well, I awesome. Well, I think this is what's coming up for me is when you think like when someone has pain, they say to themselves, just stop, just don't do anything. Yeah. And, yeah. um, you know, I think there's this old term, it's called rice, rest, ice, compression, It elevation. is an old term, yep. And um, I, I more live by MCE, move, compress, elevate. Okay. Um, because two of those lead to more blood flow. Yeah. Do you have, I know it's kind of a curveball off the cuff. No, this like, is great. What's, what's your stance on ice? Because I personally, to you know, give you a softball here, believe that ice doesn't solve chronic pain. I would say you are correct in the long in the long term and, and looking at that rice what was the one that you mv mce MC, mce so yep. the new one that we're taught in physical therapy school and i'm sure orthopedists and and people in that in that sector are taught this as, as well it's actually police it's just spelled out like the police yep. but what it stands for oh, i thought is, you were saying like go to the police go to the pain. <laughs> <laughs> right. which is actually good advice listeners if if 
something happens and you that's get yeah if we're talking a domestic pain, issue yeah you might need to go to the police <laughs> call 911 yeah oh, that's funny <laughs> go go uh, ahead break down that acronym for us yeah so the the p stands for positioning okay. so that could be hey you have swelling we need to do elevation try to okay. s- try to get swelling so out that there that cancels out my e that cancels out the e exactly Perfect. so we're seeing consistency which is good the o and the l really go together that's optimal loading and that's where jeff was talking about okay all right, we have pain. Stop. Don't do anything. Actually, not what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is, it sounds counter- counterintuitive. You maybe do in the moment, but then you go to OL is what yeah, I'm Yeah, you want to go to the OL. And that optimal loading now, that doesn't mean you're just absolutely, it's called optimal because you have to, you have to realize if you're in an acute inflammatory phase of pain, you can damage tissue if you load it too much. But if you don't do anything, you're also hurting yourself. So you really want to find light exercise intervention and isn't our goal to you know bring in inflammation here isn't our goal to speed up the inflammatory process yeah great by, point by ol it, it, exactly exactly and, and you see that a lot with um like even dry kneeling to a degree you're talking about actually kind of re-kick starting that inflammatory process so and that's I think, how that short-term intervention helps people heal faster exactly when they have pain. exactly cool. and i think sometimes we think like inflammation bad, bad. that's yeah. bad let's yeah. get rid of it let's get yeah. rid of it yeah completely necessary if you look at the three phases of healing inflammation is the first phase if you don't have that inflammatory response you can't start healing Mm -hmm. now do you want to be in that inflammatory stage all the time all the time (laughs) probably not no definitely not (laughs) Got it. definitely not and then with the ice that's with the police the ol then the i that's where ice comes in and then compression and elevation so again you're seeing the consistency there if you just do one of those letters alone you're, you're not missing as, not as effective not as not not as as effective the reason ice is prescribed a lot of times it's anti-inflammatory a lot of people ask the question heat or ice it doesn't i would say it and it could catch heat for this but like does it really matter in the grand scheme of things are those two the most important absolutely not the mm-hmm. most important thing is really movement like in your exactly the positioning is important, but really the optimal loading and the movement, like in your model, the, that is the most important part, and it needs yeah. to be specific and good quality. And I look at the purpose of ice sometimes is it does make people feel better, and in order yeah. to kind of move past pain, like yeah, that, that's like what we have to do is we've got to get people feeling better so they can buy in and do optimal to, loading to, this, to the optimal yeah. loading exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm glad. Uh, a little curveball question to catch That's you a, off there, It's a great Dr. question. Lee. No, I love it. Yeah, I'm glad he we even had an acronym for it. Yeah, yeah pretty I zone acronym. Know where we pulled that from? <laughs> it's not my acronym. I was taught that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and yeah. M- <laughs> MCE for the record, I believe I I stole that from Dr. Kelly Starrett. You know. Big cross, oh, yeah. CrossFit know, guys, I so the I believe gotcha. that's been his his quick preach around around pain. Gotcha. Um, as as a physical therapist himself, so I think we're getting close to the end of our time. I'd love to kind yeah. of wrap up here. Obviously, we've we have a lot of awesome recommendations from the first two episodes, which are really what you want to do to decrease pain. Anything you want to add to recommendations overall? Uh, Lee, from from all of our conversations of like what our listeners can think about doing? My hope is that you can see with each one, it's kind of segued and aligned with the next one. We've talked about the need for good mobility to do strength training. Um, I think we've really hammered kind of that. And again, I would say that's more of that sensory mechanical side. So I think strength training two to three days a week, functional in nature, squats, deadlifts, step ups. Exactly. And you can look at that from the standpoint preventative also as treatment it really can go either way looking on and going back to this cognitive emotional side there's more research coming out it's still mixed with meditation deep breathing we know those things can absolutely have a big influence on on pain um one of one of the research articles we we reviewed basically it said there's not enough research on mindful meditation to say this is something that people need to do to decrease as a definite as a definite to decrease chronic pain. But we do know and from that same research, it really says this is absolutely linked to decreasing stress level yeah. to, you know, really getting in, a which s- will help with the feelings that you're having around your pain. Exactly. And, and that's Got where it. to add to that. It's like anything you do that impacts your nervous system in a positive way, like down regulation through breath work or meditation is going to clearly, you know, help out this pain. It's going to exactly. Benefit. Yeah. 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 Cool. And again, are we saying, Hey, it's going to be just completely hundred percent better. Maybe not, but it's a tool. It's a tool. And it's something with, again, what's really powerful. 
you can totally do this stuff all all on your own, which is really important. Yeah. Love it. And as far as like just the, you know, bringing everything together, purpose of our kind of summary here, uh, mobility wise, think about mobility, daily practice, 10 to 15 minutes. That's obviously, you know, bringing all this together. And now Lee has added, uh, think about these mindfulness approaches such as meditation and uh, breath work. Exactly. Yeah. And you can cool. get a little bit of all that from us on Skyterra at home. I mean, we have a whole mobility section we have a whole connect section which is our like mindfulness breathwork practice yeah. in the morning time we do have full-on breathwork practices yoga practices we start doing daily great. breath at sky terra so after lunch we do a 10 minute breath session just oh, straight is that up new it's brand new all right yeah. yeah we're always evolving here based off your uh oh research. yeah every, every there's always new stuff here it's always <laughs> exciting <laughs> yeah our guests love it too the breathwork practice and we're not awesome. proud at all uh, of our Sky Terror at Home website, if you haven't been following the, <laughs> Not at all. the episodes. We put no time into that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Dr. Lee, this has been an incredible series. Dr. And, Lee. And what I just want to you know, leave you with a final question once again. Uh, what do you want our listeners to remember? Maybe from all of our time together, what should yeah. our listeners remember? Um, I'll kind of give one for this, this talk too. I think the big thing to realize is pain is a real thing. Again, it can be there. It, it can be something that's not actually happening. That doesn't mean it's not real. Reflect on all these factors in your life: stress level, you know, how is your mood? Are you moving, exercising? And then, really, from the whole thing, tying it all together, if you're if you're participating in good, solid, evidence based, really movement, and that really encompasses a lot of times strengthening and mobility and you mix in your breathing and really kind of meditating and reflecting on your movement, you're really building and really snowballing yourself in this direction where your body is becoming very resilient. And as we age, I think we think a lot of times, hey, we're losing resiliency because of these, uh, these changes that are happening. It's going to happen, but you absolutely are in somewhat of control in what you do and you can have a really big influence and a big impact on your quality of life, which I think is really important to remember beautiful mic drop great. yeah i almost saw the mic just go out of the holster there <laughs> <laughs> and uh that was great man yeah I think well thank you i've really enjoyed being on with you guys and i hope everyone listening has hopefully taken away just one or two things from this and if you're doing this stuff you're you're well on your way it's a win thanks lee very welcome hey guys this is jeff with your five minute focus Let's get your focus right for the rest of the week. Today we are back talking about our third reason that will cause anyone to lack motivation. We started this series back on episode 109, so if you want to get all the way up to speed on why you might be lacking motivation, I would go back and start there. So, are you ready for the third reason? I hope so, because this one, it won't come out of shock. The third reason you might be lacking motivation is the expectations that you are putting on your motivation. Think about it like this. You select a new TV series or movie on your favorite streaming service, you hit play, and 20 minutes in, you start saying to yourself, why did I start watching this in the first place? This TV series is terrible. This movie, it's not worth my time. The problem is that our expectations were too high or false to begin with. We hear from a friend that a TV series is awesome, so we expect it to be awesome. We become intrigued with a movie after watching a trailer, only to be disappointed once the movie begins. We say to ourselves, why were all the epic scenes only in the trailer? This isn't dissimilar from our relationship with motivation. Here's the deal. No one ever intentionally thinks to themselves that their motivation is going to be low on any given day. This isn't something that people naturally attempt to manifest. I believe that every single person has an unconscious bias built in to their expectation around motivation. The expectation is that their motivation should be high. Key phrase to clue into here is should be. But what if this built-in bias, this expectation, the should be that you're placing on your motivation 
is the very thing that's getting in the way. In life, we are all guilty of trying to predict the future. And if you think about it, what good outcomes do we experience from those attempts? Ever try to place expectations on that work presentation? Or expectations on the long weekend planned with friends? Or maybe you've even gone so far to place expectations on major life events, like a wedding or the birth of your first child. When you place high expectations on anything in life, what you will be met with is disappointment. The solution is simple and twofold. One, don't try to predict motivation and remove the idea that every day you wake up, it should be high. Two, Have a conversation with yourself about the self-imposed expectations on your motivation. Look at the expectations specific to the different areas of your life. I recommend looking at the areas where you may be struggling. For example, how do you think you should feel before you head to the gym for a workout? How do you think you should feel before you prepare a meal after work? I think what you will find is that where you have the highest expectations for motivation is where you might be struggling the most. Life is so much better when you lower the expectations you place on motivation. You end up placing less pressure on yourself and you start to understand that low motivation isn't a moral failure. It becomes just normal. And you start living life with less disappointment. What I want you to do next is to think and clarify the false expectations that you may or may not be holding about motivation. Start reminding yourself that it shouldn't be high and figure out other reasons of why you may be struggling outside of the motivation you're lacking. There is more to it than you may be identifying. And remember this, unrealistic expectations lead to self-inflicted disappointment. You deserve to live satisfied and happy. I want to thank you for joining us. This has been the end of our three-part series on healthy aging, how to strengthen the body, improve mobility, and decrease pain. We hope you've enjoyed the new show format that we've provided, and we look forward to getting your feedback in the near future. Don't forget, we need more questions. We'd love to answer them directly on an episode that comes your way soon. So please send in your questions and your comments, and we will make sure to answer those on the podcast. The Inspired Intention Podcast is a production of SkyTerra Wellness Retreat. Special thanks to our executive producer, Alan Broyhill. We look forward to having you join us next week as we cut through the unrealistic noise on diets and fitness and show you how healthy living fits seamlessly into already busy life. Thanks for listening.